Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we have another gaming on a budget video for you. So I've picked 10 games here, each one ranging from costing £1 something up to £10 something. And I've tried to pick a range of genres, some games you may not have heard of, and some games that you may well have known about but forgotten they were even released because they came out a while ago. Now as is the nature of the beast when you're doing videos like this, the first four or five games, obviously the lower end priced games, are more arcadey in nature, more pick up and play, as you would expect for that price point. And I've tried to pick games for the second half of the list that are longer experiences. Obviously the prices for the challenge are in pounds as I'm in the UK, but I will put the regional equivalents up on the screen as I'm introducing each game. Okay, with all that said, let's get started. first game is a game that I discovered quite recently called Collider Lots. Now this costs just one pound and there is a demo on the eShop as well. This game can be played from one player up to four player locally and is a party game of sorts where you take control of a vehicle and is almost a destruction derby type game but from a top down perspective. You play on rails and you can jump across from one rail to another and you can either play in a survival mode where you have to bash the other cars off of the rails or you can play a paint mode which I found really fun actually where you have to cover more of the rails in your coloured paint than your opponents and again you can smash into them and destroy them. Now Mark and I mentioned in our recent podcast type video that some games look like the very definition of shovelware until you play them and this game would fit very well into that description. I had a lot of fun with this one and for a pound it's well worth the money and fair play to them for also including a demo, something that a lot of games still don't do on the eShop. Next for just £2.69 we have Downwell. Now this is a game that many people rate very highly and it sees you try and traverse down a well using your gun boots to take out any enemies that you encounter on the way. Each run is procedurally generated so it will be a different experience every time and there are many shops that you can frequent to buy items to give yourself more of a chance. This game would fall very nicely into one of those just one more go type experiences and for this cheap price point will probably keep you entertained for quite a while. Falling into the £3 bracket at £3.79 is a game called Pirate Pop Plus. Now I've actually bought this game three times now, once for the 3DS, once for the Wii U and again for the Switch, as it's just a very cheap, quick and fun experience. It's a take on Pang, which of course is available itself on the Switch as well now, but this is about a third of the price of that game. Comes with a very pleasant Game Boy aesthetic and will see you trying to beat your high score each time you play. You will earn coins as you play and you can use these coins to try the hard mode out. The hard mode brings greater rewards but obviously if you die too early then you would have lost your coins. And you can also use your coins to buy extra music tracks and borders in the game's shop. In the £4 bracket then coming in at £4.99 and the last of the more pick up and play type games is Jack and Jill DX. This is another game that uses a Game Boy aesthetic and is an endless runner of sorts where you have to get Jack to the end of the level where he'll find Jill or vice versa. What I really liked about this one is how it mixes the gameplay up every few levels. A new mechanic will be introduced that will make the levels more interesting and it's just very well done, it's very polished for the price you are paying. There are quite a few endless runners on the Switch, some cheaper than this to be fair, but this is definitely one of the better ones for me. For the £5 bracket then we have Dragon Quest 2 Luminaries of the Legendary Line, which is an updated version of the classic game that released on the Nintendo back in the day. This version has updated controls 
and an updated art style which takes away some of the pixel graphics. Now I'll be honest, I don't like this new look. I wish they had gone for the classic look. I think this has been taken from the mobile ports that happened beforehand. But if you are working on a budget and you are looking for something cheap that will last you a good while, this certainly fits the bill. This is the second part of the Eldrick trilogy and parts 1 and 3 are also on the Switch with part 1 being slightly cheaper and part 3 being a little bit more expensive so there are other options there for you to explore as well. For the £6 bracket at £6.99 we have a game called The Room and no there is no Tommy Wiseau in sight. This is a puzzle game where you must explore a series of boxes, turning them and manipulating them with the Joy-Con, trying to find clues and solving riddles and puzzles in order to open the box and move on to the next one. I think this game was also on iOS, I might be wrong there, and I believe it's got a couple of sequels as well. They may be cheaper on iOS, I don't know, but if this is the only way you can play it and you're looking for something a bit different and something quite unique, this is definitely worth playing. There is a review for this game on the channel, so if you want a bit more information, it might be worth having a look at that. At £7.19 we have Saturday Morning RPG. This is a turn-based RPG which is a love letter to the 1980s with a huge amount of popular culture references with everything from the Power Glove to the Care Bears to Transformers to Back to the Future referenced along the way. It uses a retro art style and although some of it did start to get quite repetitive towards the end, especially the scratch and sniff sticker system, watch my review if you want to know more on that, it's still an enjoyable experience for the cheap price. It has a great soundtrack and I remember saying in my review that one of the songs towards the end sounds like it could very much have been in Rocky IV and lo and behold it's actually the same composer that did that film, Vince DiCola. Again, if you're looking for something that's going to last about 10 hours for a decent price, this could well scratch that itch. At £8.99, a game that's been out for quite a while now, in fact it was one of the first games I bought from the eShop on getting my Switch, and it's a game called Oceanhorn Monster of Uncharted Seas. This is an isometric action adventure game, which I'm sure it's not unfair to say looks to be heavily inspired by The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker and will have you exploring islands, sailing the seas, trying to ultimately track down and defeat the titular monster Oceanhorn. This was a game that got quite a lot of praise when it released and it's a very enjoyable experience and again will probably last most people around the 10 hour mark, which for the £8.99 £9 that you are paying is not bad at all. For the £9 bracket then at £9.99 we have a game called The Spectrum Retreat which is a first person puzzle game seeing you stay in at a hotel called the Penrose in the near future. You will need to work out the truth about your stay at the hotel while solving a variety of puzzles including colour coded ones and physics based ones. And this game just has a very interesting atmosphere. For under £10 again it's a very different experience on the Switch and may be one that people have overlooked. Again, there is a review of this one on the channel. Mark did this one for us, so if you want to know more, please do have a look at that. Breakfast is being served in our restaurant. Morning. I hope you had a rest. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? And finally, in the £10 bracket, coming in at £10.89, is a game called Sumo. This is a subscriber's choice. We have a subscriber called Kevin Taylor that's mentioned this game many a time in various comment sections on videos like this, and I think it's high time that we mention this game for him. Sumo is an interactive board game inspired by tabletop strategy games of the past. You play as Sumerian nobles vying for the affection of a goddess, and there are many ways that you can do this on the board as you play. This is a one to four player local multiplayer game, and you will need to try and outsmart your opponents in order to gain that favor. You can set the length 
length of time that a game lasts you, meaning that it's a good game to play regardless of whether you only have a short amount of time available or you are making an evening of it. And if the playtime on Kevin Taylor's profile is anything to go by, you could be playing this one for a long, long time. So there you have it, another 10 games for any budget. I've done three other videos that are fairly similar and I will put the links to each of those in the top pinned comment if you want to have a look at those too. Please do let me know of any games that you would recommend for any of these price points and I may well put your recommendation in a future video. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support if you would like to join them the links will be in the description below. Thank you to each and every one of you for watching our videos, take care and until next time happy gaming.